Acurex Pharmaceuticals is a publicly held clinical stage biopharmaceutical company developing a new class of antibiotics for infections caused by bacteria. And with me is the CEO, David Lucci, uh, to explain more about what the company's doing and where you are business-wise right now. And uh, let's just talk a little bit about your market cap is, is low, I mean, in terms of publicly traded companies. Um, and then Summit Therapeutics, which is also working on a similar drug as you are, uh, but actually failed phase three, but they have a larger market cap. So what do you, how do you see that discrepancy? Uh, well, Summit Therapeutics has been around uh, for a long time, as you know, on the NASDAQ. Um, they did fail phase three. They're analyzing their data and they're looking for niche indications, as I understand it, uh, down the line from frontline therapy in C. difficile, uh, patients with autoimmune disorders, patients uh, who have been uh, uh, multiple COVID patients, um, microbiome related problematic patients. So they're, it's all where they, they originally wanted to be a frontline therapy company because it's a billion dollar opportunity frontline. And now they're, unfortunately with their phase three data, they're down the line. Mm. Um, but we wish them well and we hope that their product gets approved. Uh, just like we hope uh, well for our product because it'll be better for patients with C. diff. Sure. So let's talk about C. diff a little bit because I didn't know much about this. What is that? What is your treatment that treats that? So uh, C. difficile bacteria is in the class of bacteria called firmicutes, um, which some level of uh, firmicutes are required in your microbiome. Uh, you have six classes of bacteria in your microbiome that's positive bacteria that makes you not get infected by you know every mm. uh, bacteria that comes through your system your GI tract it protects you from getting diabetes and cancer and other diseases um, unfortunately the C. difficile uh, which is one of the firmicutes when it colonizes uh, because of an imbalance in your your microbiome it colonizes through your GI tract in your colon and it kills 29,000 people a year. Most people get it either in a hospital setting or in a nursing home. Interesting. So you go in for a hip replacement or a knee replacement and you come into contact with this bacteria, it colonizes and you wind up with a worse problem than you went in for. Yeah, oh goodness, okay. Um, so does the company need funds? Like where are you with that right now? Uh, we have the funding that we need to get through this critical phase 2B trial that we're in with our ibezapolstat treating uh, patients with C. difficile. Uh, the data's been amazing thus far. We're over 25% enrolled at this point, and we're analyzing options for how to speed things up with enrollment and to try to close out our phase 2B as soon as possible uh, so that hopefully we can move on to phase 3. And that'll depend a bit on the data, um, and we're, we're kind of analyzing that right now. Yeah. But we are funded now. We did our last uh, public offering in July. Um, we went public June of 21, so we feel fortunate uh, mm -hmm. to be where we are. We have institutional uh, presence in our shareholder base, and with the NASDAQ listing, naturally, it, it helps if you need money, you can raise it. Um, but our objective, you know, we have a new class of antibiotics. There hasn't been a new class since 1984. Mm. Um, it really does belong. You know, Big Pharma wants to have cutting-edge medicine, first of a new class of medicine that's got significantly higher cure rates. We hope that continues uh, than anything out there to treat C. diff. And, and that really does belong in the bag of the sales and marketing folks at a big pharma, whether it's an Eli Lilly, a Merck, a Pfizer, like that. Yeah. Now, so you've clearly tapped the capital markets. I mean, what about grants? Are there other ways of funding? Yes, uh, we file for grants regularly. Uh, they come available under RFPs or requests for proposal from Carbex, Welcome Trust, Gates Foundation, the NIH uh, has RFPs two or three times a year, and we continue to apply for those, primarily for our earlier stage preclinical product, because that product, um, the, the, the non-dilutive funding is more to get products into the limelight than it is to fund things that are in phase 2B mm. because uh, say the Wellcome Trust may look at a 2B program and say, okay, this thing is just about ripe enough that a big pharma will take it. Mm -hmm. um, whereas something in preclinical maybe needs an extra push um, that other drugs just aren't gonna get yeah. at, that, at that level. And your drug is in phase 2B. 
our lead drug, yes. Lead drug right now. Um, so if it's successful, do you think this will be used front line instead of the current treatment, vancomycin? Am I even saying that right? Uh, vancomycin. Vancomycin. Okay. Yeah, you know, so we think our drug would be used front line. We're sure of it, in fact, if the data continues that we've already seen. Okay. So why do I say that? And, and by the way, uh, the, those who write the treatment guidelines from the Infectious Disease Society of America tell us that if one of the new drugs gets approved to treat C. diff infection, vancomycin will no longer even be on the recommended list um, because it's got a 20 to 40 percent recurrence rate. Uh, so you cure the infection and then a month later it's back mm. and it just keeps happening again and again and again. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's 60 years old. It's got serious misgivings for a frontline therapy in any indication. Hmm. So yeah, we, what we do is we restore the microbiome. So the healthy bacteria that protects a person in the gut from getting any disease, in addition to getting reinfected with the C. diff, we're restoring that by the end of day three of treatment, data shows so far. And also at the end of day three of treatment, twice a day dosing, we're curing 100% of the infections, which is, you know, it's just not seen. Small numbers, but as I say, if, if this trend, if those two trends continue, mm -hmm. then we will have differentiated ourselves from all of the products that are out there to treat C. diff. There's very few, but beyond vancomycin, which would be off the list, uh, Merck's fidaxomycin comes to mind, but it too has a, about a 15% recurrence rate. Mm -hmm. So our pharmacoeconomic argument to healthcare providers uh, would be, hey, if you use our product frontline, you're going to save all the costs of uh, getting these patients back into the hospital. So you have the hospital visit, all the medicines they're getting in the hospital for the reinfection. Mm -hmm. um, so if you use our product frontline, um, you can avoid all of those downstream costs because there won't be reinfections. Okay. Are there other competing products as well that are going through clinical trials? Um, there's a phase two program at Crestone, a private company out of Colorado. Uh, we understand they're in phase two, not enrolling very quickly. Um, being a private company, we don't have a good idea for how they're doing. Um, and beyond that, Series Therapeutics uh, has a monoclonal antibody that they're using with what they call dealer's choice antibiotics. So you take whatever antibiotic that your treating physician wants to give, plus the Series Elite uh, program. Uh, product and their claim to fame is they reduce reinfections by 31 mm. percent. So what I would what I would pose to series if we get through phase 2b successfully I would say well where's your market of C. diff patients? You know you have a 500 million or whatever it is today market cap your lead program reduces reinfections of C. diff by 31 percent but if our program continues and gets approved there won't be any reinfections. So I would imagine that could lead to some interesting discussions. Right, right. Well, that seems like a preferable outcome. <laughs> oh, that, that would be great. I mean, yeah. I like Pfizer, but serious therapeutics would be nice. Right. <laughs> um, so if it would get through then the phase two, phase three, eventual, I guess it would be FDA approval. Yes. Um, what do you see? Uh, what could this mean for your bottom line and market cap? Well, you know, it, it's hard. We're in such strange times right now uh, in the, with the financial dislocation mm. in the markets. Um, what I can, I look at the past, historically, I see Summit Therapeutics, SMMT, when they announce their phase two C. diff data, and it's mediocre data, not like what we're seeing our, with our product, they had a 225 million market cap off that press release. So I don't know that we'll get from 40 to 225 in one leap like that when we announce our 2B data, but it certainly will be something significantly higher than 40. Yeah. Even in a down market. Okay. And then what about the size just of the overall market for this? Oh, it's, oh, I'm sorry, it's $1.7 billion. $1.7 billion, okay, for the C. diff yes. market. Okay. And what about any other products that you have in the pipeline? The pipeline includes uh, a second same class antibiotic. Uh, they're called polymerase 3C inhibitors, and it treats MRSA. Oh. Along with other VRE uh, serious. Uh, threats uh, to public health. But MRSA continues to be, if you think about bacterial infections, in the hospital setting, MRSA infections are still 52% of all bacterial infections. Huh. So it's the biggest incidence. And, and our, our drug is kind of a me too cubicin, which is uh, the former cornerstone drug of cubist pharmaceuticals. 
before Merck bought them out uh, years ago. Um, our second drug has the same kill profile for bacteria that Cubicin had. Uh, but Cubicin was only IV, and ours will be IV and oral. Mm -hmm. So it's in preclinical, but it's exciting. And if we have enough time to get that uh, through into phase one, by the time we come out with our 2B data, it could be a real exciting time for our sure. Yeah, well, we look forward to that. And I know it's an issue that hospitals and nursing homes and infections, and some people don't even like to go to the hospital because they're afraid they're going to get more sick when they go. So it's a, but they kind of need to be there to be treated. So it's a, it's a it's huge a catch issue. Catch 22. It absolutely yeah. is. Well, um, please come back when you get your clinical data and we'll do. Thank let's you. See how it goes. Thank you so much, David. Nice to meet you. Uh -huh.